welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to complete my Ryzen PC build. In previous episodes of this series, we specified and assembled all the major components and looked at installing both Windows and Linux and fitted a graphics card upgrade. And so in this final video, I'm going to finish things off by fitting these two rather exciting looking LED illuminated front fans and also this RGB lighting strip. So here we have the very last boxes we'll be opening up in this series. But uh, just before we take a look inside, I thought I'd explain my objectives with this final video. And firstly, what I want to do is to improve the airflow in the case, because right now our PC has got a processor fan, it's got two graphics card fans, it's got a fan in the PSU to draw in air through the base and exhaust it out of the back, and we've also got a rear case fan to remove hot air. However, there are no front case fans, and so we'll be adding two of those. And given that the front of the case is mainly solid, these will draw in air via the small top vent and the larger base vent and hopefully lower our PC's internal temperature. And I'd note that in this case, when it was just fitted with the Ryzen 3 2200G using internal graphics, I wasn't too worried about not having a front fan. But uh, now we've added the graphics card and in the last video, I think it's a good idea to have the front fan to try and control the internal temperature. Secondly, in this video, I want to gain some experience with LED lighting. As I saw at the Future Tech Now show in 2018, some PCs now have amazing lighting rigs, and our motherboard has got a 12 volt RGB lighting connector, and so I thought it'd be nice to experiment with that. So, if we go back to our boxes here, and we'll get rid of that one for a second, let's start with these. Oh look, two things, one's appeared, it was hiding. These are two fans, these are our two front case fans. And as you can see, these are Corsair fans, they're their AF120 LED series fans. I've got two here separately, those cost about uh, £10 each or about $12 each, although you can buy a combined pack with two or three fans, although the price seems to work out about the same. And I'd point out that these are basically a standard 120mm case fan, a 12 volt case fan, which happens to have four LEDs inside it, so that you can see the LEDs in the sort of semi-transparent fan. So this is not controllable lighting. These come in red or blue or green or purple or white, but you decide the color when you get them, and basically as soon as you turn the fan on, you've got the color, there's no user control, but they should look rather nice. So uh, let's get inside. Hopefully we can, uh, Stanley the knife will uh, help us out here. Let's get this in down there. Can we get in, Stanley? Come on, there we are. And uh, have I done it? It seems, yes, I have. Oh dear. Box has been destroyed in the unboxing. Never mind. It doesn't really matter, does it? But uh, there we are. What a what a radical unboxing. Oh, that's actually quite a, a wacky looking fan, isn't it? With its uh, lead there, fan, and uh, obviously some screws to fix it in. I'm, I'm quite impressed with that, actually. That's a rather nice looking thing, isn't it? Shall we do the other one? Do you think we can do the other one less violently? Let's try doing it at the base. Maybe that's good. It doesn't really matter, does it? What will happen to these boxes in the future? Nothing at all. But uh, anyway, can we do the base? No, that's not the way to get in. Yes, we can, because we can rip it open. Oh, I'm in a wild mood today. But that other box over there is quaking in its boots. And there we are, we've got our two case fans. It looked like you can build a drone with these, couldn't you? Anyway, we won't do that, we'll be fitting these in our PC. So, I think we should now move to this box, which contains lighting which is very much user controllable. This is the Asaka Magnetic LED Strip Light. Basically, this is a 15 LEDs in a strip, a 50 centimeter strip with magnets so you can attach it inside your PC. And it's got a 12 volt four pin RGB connector. You should be aware there are different uh, connectors and different voltages used for LED lighting on PCs. If you want to use a, an LED strip on the motherboard we're actually using in, in this particular build, you want an LED strip with a 12 volt four pin connector. So uh, let's get inside uh, here. This looks, uh... oh, is it sealed at all? Very simple. I don't know how we get in here. Again, I'm in box destroying mode. Look, it doesn't seem to want to, oh, it was, it was sealed at the edge, Chris. That might make life easier. There we are. Can we get in? Oh, what a mess I'm making of my unboxings today. You'd think after all these years, I know how to open a box, but I don't. And oh, there we are. This is interesting, isn't it? Uh, there's some uh, 
adapters or something, I presume. And uh, this is the thing itself, which is uh, interesting, isn't it? There we are. This is the, you can see the uh, LEDs on the strip. It's very flexible. And uh, you can see that. Oh, I understand. These things here probably attached via these things to uh, the motherboard. So there is our our, our lighting strip. I look forward to, to playing with that in a minute. And although you can control it from the motherboard, as you can probably see, they've given us a, a Molex connector, so you could just power it directly um, from your motherboard, but you couldn't presumably control it in that circumstance. And uh, talking of Molex connectors, here I've got a Molex to a fan adapter. And the reason I've got this is because the PC we're working on has got two motherboard fan headers one of which is used to control the rear case fan at the moment. So we've got two fans going in, only one motherboard header. And therefore we've got to have some sort of adapter to deal with that. And there's two things we could do. One is we could use an adapter which goes from one motherboard header into two fans. That would be a reasonable solution. But having said that, I've been looking at the fans and their rating, and they're rated at a 12 volts as we know, over 12 volt fans, 0.4 amps. So two together would be 0.8 amps. And that's Probably okay to be powered from motherboard fan header. It's very difficult to get data on how, what sort of current you can draw from a motherboard fan header. Some motherboard manufacturers say up to about an amp, some say about 0.75 amps. It's on the edge, I think, to use two fans which have got LED lighting in them from one motherboard fan header. So what I'm gonna do is to power at least one of my fans using a Molex connector. And it's worth pointing out, Molex connectors have two different voltages in them. They carry both 12 volts and five volts. So here we've got two fan headers which go from a red cable and a black cable which are for five volt fans and two headers here which are for 12 volt fans like we're using. So I'm going to be using probably one of these, one of these yellow and, and black lead connectors to power one of our case fans. And because that won't leave us any speed control, I've also got, and I found this lying around in my bits box, it's good to have been doing computers for a long while, you have lots of things in the bits box. This is a fan a speed controller which you can use to uh, twist a little knob there to control the uh, speed of the fan. Anyway, I think I've now shown you all the parts we'll be using in today's construction activities, so let's go and fit these parts into our PC. Right, here I am back again with the uh, Ryzen PC, and as you can see, I've removed both of the side panels so we can both get in to fit things, but also we can sort out wiring around the back, do a little bit of cable management to uh, neaten things up when everything is fitted. And the first thing we're going to do is to fit the fans. And the two fans go in here at the front, they go in basically there and uh, there. And to get them in, they screw in from this side, which means I've got to take the front off the case, which should be fairly straightforward. I'll just come around here, give it a, a thump like this, and hopefully there we are. Yes, that comes off nice and uh, straightforwardly. And you can see here how the fans will be on the other side of this grill. So we take our uh, first fan, and the key thing to note is the airflow here. So we've got to fit these things so that the Corsair logo is at the front of the case, so the air is pulled through that way, pulling air into the case, warm in the middle, and then it gets exhausted again by the rear fan out the back. So we'll fit, I think, the first fan in here, thinking about where our wiring goes. It goes in something like that. And we then need to take Mr. Screwdriver and uh, screw it into place. Get in the first screw is always the most important thing, and it started off down there. I'm afraid this is a little bit difficult for you to see. I'm filming black things against black, as I often am with this build. So uh, I'll get on here and put in the screws. And uh, there we are, that's the first fan uh, almost. And I've not tightened it up because I want to put in the, the second fan to make sure it's going to fit next to it okay. So we'll uh, take our uh, second fan. And again, I think I'll keep the wire at the bottom. These will actually meet up when I get them right. So again, we want to put in the uh, the first screw to start it off. And uh, there we are, they're both in, they're nicely uh, lining up, so I'll just uh, put those screws in uh, firmly. And uh, there we are, our PC has now got two front case fans, or my days of course improved because I've done some uh, PC assembly. Any day is good when you do some PC assembly, isn't it? And those fans are sitting nicely there at the front of the case. So the next thing we need to do is to give them some power to connect their uh, cables to, to something. 
and the first fan is going to go to uh, the motherboard and get these wires right. So I want the fan down here, I think, to be the one that's temperature controlled. This, I think, is the more significant fan because it's got the bigger air vent when the cover's back on down here. And this needs to plug, therefore, into the motherboard. And there is a motherboard fan connector down in here. And I have no hope whatsoever of getting a shot of that for you. So all I can do is to show you it here from the very first video in this series where I showed you all the connectors. That's the connector I'm going to be connecting uh, the lead onto. And uh, by the magic of filmmaking, as we come back to this video, the connector is in. And was it a swine to get it down there? It was, but I've got it in and I've got it fairly neatly in. The wire goes through here, around the back and back into the fan. So we now need to get power to our second front fan. That's going to come from this Molex connector down here. Uh, we're going to use the Molex adapter uh, we saw earlier, which I'll plug in something like uh, this. Get that in there like that and then it's plugged into the speed controller I showed you earlier, and we'll plug from the end of that into the, uh, the fan, which will go in something like uh, that. But of course, that's not very neat, so I'll use the magic of filmmaking again to make it all beautifully neat. And there we are. It's now all sorted out. The wiring is in place. I've also put back on the uh, metal side panel because all the wiring is going to get as neat as it will. I know some of you don't like the wires here for the power supply. They have to go somewhere. There is nowhere in this case to to, to put them other than this. You could build a shroud around them in plastic. I don't mind them there, they're part of the technology. And just so you can see it, we might be able to see it, my fan controller, you might just about see, is down here. Uh, it sort of hides in the gloom, the black on the black on the black, but it's down there. So I guess now we should put the front back on the case. That should be fairly straightforward. That was very straightforward. That was nice and simple. And the final thing we need to do now in this build is to put in our LED lighting strip. I've been looking forward to fitting this for, for months since I started planning this build in the late November 2018. And finally, I get to do it. Now, this plugs into the motherboard with the header, which is down here. This is a 12 volt RGB connector. And I've had a real problem finding out exactly which way around this, this can fit. Because if I take it down here to show you, you can see that this cable has got connectors that go on this way around, or indeed it can go on that way around as well. It'll fit either way. And if it fits on the this way around, you'll see it's got a 12 volts facing away from the graphics card on this board. But uh, if I take this out, you'll see that uh, here, the other end would have 12 volts actually facing the graphics card on the board and that's to fit on that way. And in fact, that's the way it has to fit. And how did I find that out? Did I look in the motherboard manual? I did, it's not mentioned in the motherboard manual. None of the pins are labeled on the motherboard there. I looked on the Gigabyte website, downloaded everything there, nothing tells you. I've had a big search around to find out which way the cable goes in, but that's where the way it has to go in with 12 volts on this side facing towards the graphics card. So, all we need to do now is to arrange this in the case. And I suddenly thought maybe there should be a, a cable between the connector and this to sort of move it up a bit. I'm sure they exist. I haven't got one, so I'm just going to fit it as I've got it. And uh, magnets will hold it there. And um, where should it be? I don't really know. But uh, that's probably going to work OK, isn't it? The, some of the lights are up here. They'll be out of sight. They'll illuminate the case. These will just be in view being sparkly and interesting. Hopefully that's the idea. So. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is rather than putting the side panel on straight away, I'm going to set the machine up and uh, here it is just temporarily set up so I can uh, turn it on and hopefully, yes, it works. We've managed to add our LED lighting and that looks really good. Now it probably looks less good to you because I've got problems figuring out how to get this showing up properly on camera, balancing my movie lights with the LEDs, but hopefully you can see the effect we've successfully added interior lighting to our Ryzen PC. So, here I am back for a final segment booted into Windows, and the PC has now got its side panel back on, and as you can see, internally it's green. The LED lighting strip is now set to green. So, how have I done that? Well, all you've got to do is to install the right software. And if we go to the web, I just point out that different motherboard manufacturers have different systems, different technologies, different software for changing and altering their, their lighting systems. So for example, if you've got an MSI motherboard, you'll be using a system called Mystic Light. But if you're using a Gigabyte motherboard, as we're doing here, you'll have a system called a RGB Fusion. There it is, look. And you can get this installed by using the full Gigabyte software suite we looked at last time and I didn't install, but you could also just install the app itself if you wish. So I just went to the motherboard support page, 
went down here somewhere, all the way down here, somewhere down here is uh, under R probably, there we are, RGB Fusion. So I simply installed that app. It told me I should have installed App Center first. I didn't, but things are working absolutely fine. And if we just go down here, you'll see RGB Fusion is running. Here it is, not a terribly sophisticated looking app. And basically, it gives you control of the LEDs on the system. So this particular LED is the strip light integrated into the motherboard. That can be either off or pulsing or static. But this down here is our LED lighting strip. So for example, I could turn it to blue. I could select blue and uh, apply. And our PC is now blue internally. That's rather nice, isn't it? Or we could go back to, uh, we could go back to red if we wanted to. So click up red over there and apply that. And obviously that makes it red. Or we could uh, go back to, I don't know, I quite like the green. Let's go back to green. Now let's try purple. We'll try the purple. There we are. It could be a purple. But I think I'm going back to green because I rather liked the green. So we'll go back to uh, the, the green. There we are. We've gone through a range of colours. And of course, you could do far more with lighting than I've done here. I've simply fitted a couple of case fans with red LEDs in them and one lighting strip that can be one of seven colours or one of eight colours if you count off black being the other colour. Now, the other thing people have asked me about during this series has been power use on this PC, and sadly I didn't test power use before I fitted the graphics card. But earlier today I did put a power meter onto the system, and as you can see, at absolute maximum load it went up to about 150, 153 watts. This was doing a very graphically intensive application where the processor and the graphics card was stressed out. But as soon as you took it down to a, an idle state, it goes down to about 40 watts, maybe down to about 38 sort of as a minimum. So the range here is about 40 to 150 watts for a 2200G Ryzen with a 1050 Ti graphics card. As you can't have failed to have noticed, on the desktop here I've also got a core temp looking at temperatures. System's been running for a while, and as you can see, we've had a minimum temperature of about 34. That's where this system seems to idle, and a maximum of about 65. That, of course, depends on your ambient. Here the ambient today is about 22 degrees. It's supposed to be the warmest day ever in February here today in, in the UK, but that's the ambient I've got, which has given us that temperature. So there we are. There's some information on the temperatures and uh, power use, and also using RGB Fusion to control our lovely new lighting. So, here we are at the end of our Ryzen 3 PC build series. Over the last six episodes, we've progressed from a large collection of boxes of components through all the build process and installing software, all that kind of thing, and we've ended up with this working computer. And I'm very pleased with the final result. Now, many of you have asked what's happening to this PC now, which of my computers is it replacing, and the answer is none of them. I've given the Ryzen 3 PC to my dad, he's now got it installed on his desk, where it's connected to these rather impressive looking controllers to uh, work the flight simulator X-Plane 11. More information on this build can be found at explainingcomputers.com forward slash Ryzen. But now that's it from this video and this series. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.